Hello, welcome to the McGuffey's Online Tutor. Today's lesson comes from the McGuffey's 6th Eclectic Reader, the revised edition. Lesson 47, The Character of Columbus. You cannot talk about Columbus without knowing about Byzantium, the Eastern Christian Roman Empire, and Spain. The Eastern Christian Empire lasted over 1,500 years. They kept a competent and strong army, because they said you've got to have a good army on the field in order to protect the empire's borders. And you've got to have food to feed an empire. They recognized the importance of farmers. Whatever they did with business, they always made sure the farmers were not overtaxed. They made sure they always had sound, hard money, gold and silver. Therefore, all over the world, far beyond the frontiers of Byzantium, the Byzantine coins circulated, stressing the army, farming, food and hard money is what enabled them to persist as long as they did. Of course, it wasn't without problems. From Asia and from Northern Europe, various barbarian groups were converging on the one place where the wealth and the money was. So you had continually the pressure of huge hordes of barbarians out of Asia, vast numbers, as well as tribes of Northern Europe. The life on the frontiers was difficult, and these pressures were intense. Failing in its later years by debasing its money to pay big debts and demanding high taxes, its weakened state diminished the moral spirit of its people and strengthened its enemies, falling to the Ottomans in 1453 AD, with the sack of Constantinople on the Golden Horn. Spain was occupied by the Moors, the Islamic State, in 711 AD and had been in wars of reconquest on the peninsula for 780 years. It ended right before the discovery of the New World at the fall of Granada, the last Islamic stronghold of Granada, was defeated in January 1492 AD, the year Columbus sailed the ocean blue. It was the 2nd of January 1492, Mohammed Twelfth. The last emir of Granada surrendered his city to the army of the Christian monarchs. Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile bringing an end to 780 years of Muslim control. This Spanish victory marked the gradual return of Christian rule in the Iberian Peninsula. The fall of Constantinople and general encroachment of the Turks in that region also severed the main overland trade link between Europe and Asia. As a result, more Europeans began to seriously consider the possibility of reaching Asia by sea. Again with the Ottomans in the east in control of the Golden Horn and the Moors in the south, the trade routes east were blocked. Spain was the European power, but financially broke after the long reconquest. Europe needed a western route to trade with India and China. Columbus' travel to the Americas in 1492 and Vasca de Gama's circumnavigation of India and Africa in 1498 strengthened the economy and power of European nations. Christopher Columbus, Queen Isabella, sold jewels to pay for the voyage west. Columbus was given a rabble of men and three ships. He was incredible. He kept a rabble of men focused. They were not moral or disciplined. This was a big job and Columbus did it. He had collected and studied maps for years. He knew the earth was round. He went west to find a trade route to the East Indies. He went west to find gold to refill the empty coffers of Christian Europe. He went west as a Christian to spread and establish Christendom. 
There were numerous explorers that discovered America before Columbus. But it was Columbus that looked at the untamed, wild, and lifeless land, heavily forested with hope. He saw the work, the thick dark forest from the east coast to the Great Lakes, so thick and dark nothing else could grow. Very little food grew, hence very little wild game and no grass for livestock. The thick forests caused Indians to starve regularly, and many more settlers would meet the same end before the trees could be felled and farms built and cultivated. Columbus saw the work and had hope. Columbus ended up making four trips to the West Indies after living through storms and the Santa Maria shipwreck. Dealing with the immoral rabble sailors, long journeys, meeting a cruel and crude culture, Montezuma sold human flesh in the market. A great deal of attention is given to the Roman Empire. But the Roman Empire never was the equal of Byzantium. A great deal of attention is given to Greek achievements, but they are nothing when compared to Byzantium's. Byzantium is bypassed. History has been falsified. What Byzantium did with a very bad theology begs to question what could be done with a sound theology. And of course, precisely what Byzantium did, the same is true for the Puritans. The Puritans came to America with the same purpose, and they wrote back and sent pamphlets to England, summoning others to come. They said, Come, for we will here build Zion, the city of our God. America thus had a glorious beginning. Byzantium had a noble purpose, but a very faulty obedience to it in their theology. America's purpose was sound. How much greater is America's offence that Americans have departed from it? Deliberately twice in history, men set out to establish Zion on earth. Once in Byzantium and once in America. America gained its greatness from that purpose. It will not return to it unless it returns to that purpose. And yet, where is Byzantium in the history books? All you learn in the history books are the errors and the evils. Nothing about the struggle for victory and accomplishments. Because, of course, Christian accomplishments sprang from faith. And this, the modern political correctness will not acknowledge. So many modern-day opinions don't include the big picture of the world. The losses of Byzantium, like Constantinople and the Hagia Sophia, the Christian Basilica, and the 770-year struggle to reconquest Spain, and the hardships Columbus had to endure to enrich the world. I will end with a mural found in Hagia Sophia of St. John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, the golden-mouthed and his prayer. O Lord, who knowest thy creation, and that which thou hast willed for it, may thy will also be fulfilled in me, a sinner, for thou art blessed for evermore. Amen. Well, this is the end of our lesson, and I hope you visit us again at TheMcGuffeysOnlineTutor.com. Peace be with you. See you soon.